Hello and welcome to another episode of the Good Hearted Podcast. Today I'm talking about my recent struggles when it comes to decluttering and letting some stuff go. And honestly, this is kind of new for me because for a long time I've been really, really good at letting go of things. And so I just kind of wanted to talk on (laughs) what I've been going through lately and the struggles I've had when it comes to decluttering. And before we get totally into this topic, I just wanted to address that I'm wearing my glasses today. (laughs) I have a consultation for LASIK in a week. And so I have to go like a whole week without wearing my contacts and I rarely wear my glasses. So sorry if there's like glaring on them. Uh, I feel like my eyes look teeny tiny because I am so blind. I am like blind as a bat. So anyway, I am very excited for my LASIK consultation. I'm a little bit nervous, but I am looking forward to not having to worry about contacts or glasses anymore. So I'm also trying to record some things in advance. That way, if I have to have the more complicated version of LASIK and it takes me out for a couple days, I'm not like behind on content. So in the next couple episodes, you'll probably see me wearing my glasses, which I think they are pretty cute, but kind of feel like a librarian or a teacher today or something because I like never wear these with makeup and trying to do my makeup was very, very difficult without like being able to see. So don't look too closely (laughs) just in case. So now I'm just going to get into today's topic, which is I am struggling letting go of things. And honestly, this is very weird for me. And I've had a lot of feelings around decluttering lately. Since it is springtime, now I guess the beginning of summer, I've had that like need for something new, something fresh, feeling like I've been cooped up in my house and I'm tired of seeing the clutter and all the stuff that we've accumulated like since Christmas and Harper's birthday. And I just, in the wintertime, I don't feel that need to purge everything. And I don't really know why that is because now that the weather is warmer and it's nicer out, I've been spending way more time outside, but I've still felt overwhelmed with my home. Uh, But either way, I just realized like I need to do some deep cleaning. And then I realized I have so much stuff in our house. And for many years, I have decluttered on a regular basis. And for whatever reason, the past couple months, I just haven't done that. And like when Harper was younger, it seemed like she was outgrowing things very quickly, clothes every three months, toys every like four to six months, where she just was ready for like the next developmental step of toy. And now it feels like she's been playing with a lot of the same things for a long time. And I guess I just have gotten out of that groove of decluttering things. And in one of my last episodes, I talked about me kind of struggling with Harper moving into a big kid bed. And I think that was also kind of attached to like the idea of getting rid of some of these toys that I have loved for so long and I've loved seeing her play with them. And it was like, I knew it was time to go through her toys and sort through it. But just thinking about it, I had all of these like negative thoughts and feelings towards it. I, for the first time, was like concerned about the financial aspect of it. Like I spent money on this stuff. I can't let it go. I haven't gotten my money's worth. Where for a long time, like with having a baby, you buy so much stuff that you use for a very short amount of time and has like barely even been used by the time you're done with it. And so really, I feel like I should have worried about losing the money back then more so than I have been now. Um, But either way, I've struggled with that, the idea of losing money because of me just getting rid of something or giving it away. I've also just had to like face the fact that my daughter is getting older and she doesn't need some of the like more baby toys. She's moved on to like wanting to play with different kinds of blocks and more challenging puzzles and things like that. And it just, it has been moving so fast for me. And I never thought her toys or her things would get like out of control because for many, many years I had like refined Dylan and I stuff, not so much Dylan's, but like our shared things and then my things to be like just the bare minimum, what we needed because I was so tired of constantly having to pick up clutter and just keep track of things. And I've like kind of become a hoarder again. Like 
I don't know. I, I've been holding on to clothes that I don't even enjoy wearing. I've been keeping shoes for just in case, like been holding on to kitchen utensils that like I don't use. So I feel like there's something much deeper going on that I just have not faced yet. And so earlier this week, I tried to kind of sit with my feelings and think through why I was feeling the way I was. I felt like there were probably some feelings I was avoiding and just I wanted to kind of confront it in like a nice easy way so that it didn't become like this chaotic stressful anxiety inducing situation and so I definitely struggled with seasonal depression this past winter like I always do I feel like a lot of us who live in the midwest or the north you know east area um we just we have pretty cold winters and so everything is dead for so long outside like and the weather's like not super cold necessarily but it's not enjoyable to go out and do things so in the winter I always have some like set hobbies that I do I usually tend to crochet and I love reading in the winter time just things that make me feel cozy and happy and kind of distract me from being cooped up in the house all the time. Reading is a nice little escape for me. Crocheting is something very mindless I can do, but like I love feeling the yarn. I love the repetitiveness of crocheting. Um, But I have found that once spring started, like I wasn't crazy about crocheting anymore. I was just kind of bored of it, you know, and kind of the same thing with reading. I started off the year really strong. I think I read like 10 or 11 books just in January of this year. And then I read Verity by Colleen Hoover and it like fucked me up. (laughs) Like I definitely should have read the trigger warnings on that one and just learned more about like the context of that book. But then I really struggled picking up another book and like I just had one after the other that was just not interesting to me. And so I was just feeling down. I was feeling like the hobbies that I enjoyed, like I wasn't really enjoying them anymore. And I was just ready to be outside, to get some vitamin D, to be able to go somewhere with Harper that's like just outside. Like I don't have to pack her up in the car. We don't have to spend money. And so Getting outside again definitely helped me like it normally does. My sad started to go away a little bit. And I actually, for the first time really ever, became interested in learning more about flower gardens and potentially planting one for us. And so I got moving outside. And that is kind of what started to get me out of my funk. I was sweating and I was working hard and I was getting my hands dirty and just feeling that sense of accomplishment of like putting something in the ground and being willing to take care of it kind of thing. And I have never, ever, ever had success with plants indoor or outdoor. And so I have very low expectation for these, but just having some alone time to myself to go outside and like I said, get my hands dirty and just like connect with the earth again after like such a long winter was great for me. And I felt like after I was kind of doing that, then I wasn't afraid to come back inside and tackle some things in my house, like as far as chores went, because it was like I was putting off everything. I had very low energy. Um, I think it also had something to do with my cycle. I've just been having really down weeks that like seemed to last for a long time where, you know, in years past, it's been like a day here or there, but this was like weeks one after another that I would just feel very down, very low energy, had zero motivation. And I was like, what the hell is wrong with me? Like everything's fine. Nothing's wrong. But really, I think I was just feeling lonely and honestly, a little bit bored at home just because I love spending time with my daughter and teaching her things. But that's obviously on an intellectual level way lower than my own. And so I just didn't feel like I was being stimulated very often. And I think that was just kind of contributing to me feeling down. So when I was in that state, I didn't want to declutter. I didn't want to go through all my shit because I was like, I'm just going to be 
disappointed in myself that we have accumulated this much stuff in our home. But then my parents decided it was time to sell their house. And so we've been helping them get packed up, moved out, things moved into their new place, like doing all those things. And I've seen my mom let go of a lot of things that I really thought she would struggle with letting go of. And I am so proud of her for letting go of some things because there's nothing worse than moving into a house and feeling like you've already outgrown it. We have definitely done that in the past where we brought way too much stuff into a small house and then took forever to get unpacked, took forever to come up with systems that worked for us and just felt like we were drowning and we couldn't bring anything new into the home because we already had so much. So that's never a good feeling. So working on her house and then a friend of mine is also going through the process of buying and selling a house. And so like seeing her go through that same thing, I feel like that kind of got me motivated and reminded me that I am allowed to spend time on my own home and the space that I spend all of my time. Uh, and I can do it with Harper at home because a lot of times I just get overwhelmed and I feel like I can't do a simple task without her being right there, either wanting to help or, you know, just interested or she wants me to go do something else. And so it's like a task that takes me way longer than it would if I was in the house all by myself. And so some days I just don't have the energy. I'm like, I'm not even trying any projects today. I'm not doing any chores. Like it can all wait. And I just decided, you know, when I'm in the mood to declutter or try to move some things around, I'll just try to do it. Whether I do it during her nap time or if I make it an activity that we can do together and just be patient and like accept that it's probably going to take me a little bit longer to get this test done. So anyway, being able to pack up other people's shit and <laughs> help them go through it and get rid of it really got me kind of motivated again to try to tackle my own home because Harper's Playroom is like a huge pain point for me right now. I have not come up with a system that works well for me and works well for her and, you know, Dylan. And it's just too much. It seems like a humongous project. And I just have not had like the energy or game plan to tackle it yet. And like I mentioned, I think in my last episode as well, or maybe the one before that, um, I was able to kind of get my thoughts and feelings out to Dylan about letting go of some of Harper's toys and some of her like baby stuff that I just know that we're done with. Like even her potty training stuff, like her little training potty, it's probably time to get rid of that. But it's just crazy to me that she is still so little and she has like outgrown all of these toddler things. I don't know. It's just, it's been a hard transition for me. But after I kind of talked it out with Dylan, it just made me realize I was making my life harder by holding on to these things that that maybe Harper didn't even play with anymore or wasn't interested in, or she would play with something that would be more for her age if I got rid of this other toy. And I always am worried about like getting rid of something and then her asking for it like immediately uh, or anything I like try to pile in the garage. Like she goes right over to it and then she's like, oh my God, my favorite toy ever that I haven't touched in four months. But I'm sure if you have kids, you know how that goes. Uh, and so I just kept telling myself like, those are all reasons and excuses why it's not time for me to tackle that just yet. And even aside from like my clutter in my house, I was just feeling very down the last couple months and I'm not really sure why at this point I'm finally starting to feel better. I think a big part of it is getting that vitamin D, um, but my life has also kind of got back to like normal, like it was before the panini (laughs) and I'm struggling with that sometimes because sometimes I'm just really tired. Sometimes I just want to go to bed early. Sometimes I am not refueled by being surrounded by people like I used to be. I think these last couple years I've become much more introverted and most of that is probably because I'm hanging out with Harper all day long. And so sometimes it's so good for me to take a little time out and just like Dylan comes home from work and we see each other for a minute and then either before or after dinner, I'll just tell him I'm going to take five and it might end up being more like 
25 or 30 minutes, but I can just go back to our room, close the door, have the lights off, close my eyes, do a meditation, scroll on TikTok, like whatever I am needing in that moment. Uh, Because sometimes I like to be on TikTok because it makes me laugh. And it's like adult entertainment, basically, instead of the cartoons that I've been watching all day. Sometimes I literally just need to lay down and breathe because I'm feeling overwhelmed or stressed or whatever it is. And so just having those couple minutes to myself can make such a huge difference and allow me to have clarity about what is going on. You know, why am I stressed out? What is it about my home and my clutter that I don't like? Uh, Why can't I be happy in this house? You know, all of those things that just when you're in your daily routine, you're going through the motions and you're like, this is not it. Like today, this is not it. It's not working for me. It's not making me happy. What is going on? And so for me, I just finally had to admit that the clutter was what was stressing me out and it was time to address it, whether I got rid of it or I came up with systems that would work for my family. So we've been in this house for almost three years now and I still don't have really any systems in place that work well for us. And so my AC just kicked on. If you can hear that, it's probably gonna be coming through the vent and be a little loud. And so when I decided it was really time to tackle this clutter and just get my house to a place that felt good for me, I had to break my own rules a little bit. I've always tried to have a minimalist approach when it comes to my house, like not a ton of shit on the walls, which like, look behind me. I'm like so proud of me, honestly, for putting some decorations up in my house, but also like just not having excess clothes and shoes and toys and decorations and candles and like a backstock of tons of things because I don't like to feel like my home is bursting at the seams. But in this season of life, I need to just be okay with there being more things in my home because I have a husband and I have a daughter and sometimes we just need more stuff. You know, right now we have lots of different options when it comes to swimsuits and outdoor play toys and indoor play toys and like different kinds of shoes that we need and different options for food and having more things stocked in the pantry because I'm doing more of the like last minute meals where I'm just throwing things together because honestly, I have not been good about planning our meals in advance, but also with like helping people move and having other things going on. I just never know if we are going to be home that evening or not, or if we're going to end up eating with somebody else or going somewhere, running errands. And so just in this season of life, it makes way more sense for me to have a pantry that's stocked of things that are just easy to take and make. And it's also way more convenient to have options when it comes to clothes and shoes and hats and like special things like that, where before I would have been like, bitch, you only need one ball cap, which is true, right? But now I'm like, who knows what could happen to my one ball cap. I could end up dropping it in the pool water because I'm looking down at Harper and whatever. And then I need another one or having multiple pairs of shoes or even more clothes just because I'm not doing laundry as often as I used to. I used to try to do it like every three days I was washing something. Now I'm lucky if I get it all done in one day. That's just kind of where I am in life right now. It's still a little chaotic and I'm still figuring this shit out, but I'm just coming to understand that right now I need more things. I need more leggings and more bike shorts because that's all I wear at home, like is loungewear. So what's the point in having like a bunch of jeans and nice shirts if literally all I ever wear is leggings? Literally right now I have leggings on because why not? It's not like you're seeing anything else, Uh, but just allowing myself to have excess of certain things like that, that have made my life so much easier. So that was one like big hurdle I had to get over was just being like, it's okay to have this instead of constantly being down on myself for having too many things, because I was willing to have, for instance, more pairs of leggings and not have to do laundry 
multiple times a week and instead wait until Friday night, Saturday night, do it. And then on Sunday, spend some time like folding it or sit in bed and fold it, whatever it is. Like that is just what works for me right now. And And so I really just had to be way more realistic with myself in this season of life. Dylan and I have talked all the time, like, this is not going to be forever. Right now, it's not super easy for us to just pick up and go to dinner or hang out with friends until the middle of the night. And that it just is what it is. So we've got to make tweaks that will work for us right now in real time instead of work for like the ideal version of ourselves. And so anyway, being okay with that is one piece of that. But then also learning more about organization and like why my systems have not been working for us was another thing. So I have come to find out because this past week I've been doing way more research on organization in general, because I've always been into like the HGTV shows on organization and making over rooms and doing all of these things. Right. And all of those things are so pretty and not necessarily super functional. And so I needed to learn more about systems and what works for me, what works for Dylan, what could potentially work for Harper, because Now, all the time, any of us could be picking up her toys or putting her clothes away or doing laundry. Um, Harper even helps with dishes and cooking and stuff like not really helps, but you know, she's there. (laughs) And it was just clear to me that things that made sense to me did not make sense to Dylan and vice versa. So basically, long, long story short, I do not like seeing my stuff. I like to have cleared counters. I like to have, you know, not just random things sitting out on display unless it's like a very curated, small designated spot. I also, I hate dusting. So like, I'm not trying to have a bunch of little trinkets like all over my house. Like, no, I want my counters to be mostly clear. That way when it's time for me to cook and do something on the counter, I have the space to do that but I still want everything to have a home. So then my options are to store things behind closed doors, cabinets, closets, under the bed, like just things like that. And so because I don't like seeing my shit out, whenever somebody was coming over, especially if it was like last minute, then everything would get shoved into my office or into the closets, especially like our front coat closet or even inside the garage, I just like throw it out the door. I was just like, I need it gone. I I don't want to see it. I don't want these other people to see it. And then those things obviously were not in the correct spot or in their home. And so like I couldn't find them and my office would become a mess. And it was just this cycle that went over and over and over and over again. And then my house would be out of control and I wouldn't know where to start. And I felt super overwhelmed. I'm sure you can relate to some of those feelings, or at least I hope you can, and I'm not the only crazy one. Um, But anyway, Dylan is the kind of person who wants everything out. He wants to see everything he has. He wants things out until he is finished with a project, like our reading note. We have been working on that, I think, since January, maybe February, but it has been a long ass time. And our little caddy with all of his tools and all of the supplies for the reading nook have been in front of our fireplace for all of those months. For me, I'm like, oh my God, I hate looking at it. I hate seeing it. Thankfully, Harper doesn't really mess with it. She's used to it being there, but I'm just like, why can't he put all these things back? Because like, it has literally been sitting there for months and we have not touched it. (laughs) But that is just who he is. I'm the one who doesn't want to see that shit. He wants to see it and like just know where it is and it be in a very obvious spot. So now I'm trying to work through, okay, what is going to work for both of us? And so I'm excited to implement some of these systems and to think more about like the organizational items I'm going to get for our space because I feel like I understand both of us a little bit better. I'm the one who wants like a broad category basket or bin that I can literally just chuck something into because I am not the person like when I'm speed cleaning the house who wants to meticulously be like, okay, what is this category and subcategory? And oh, this thing goes in here. 
No, I would rather it go in one big bin. That's a general category. And then when I need that thing again, I will go back there and then dig for it and find what I need. Um, Dylan is the total opposite. What else would we expect? He wants, you know, something that's maybe a clear container that's clearly labeled and is that like micro organized. Um, and so I've kind of just decided to start with the playroom because that is my biggest pain point right now. I am terrified to tackle the kitchen and the pantry because I would not even know what to do. Honestly, our bedrooms need done. Our bathrooms need done. Like literally everything needs organized and the garage as well. Probably also the shed if Dylan would let me touch it, but we will see about that. Uh, so anyway, with the playroom, we have these two cube organizers that each have four holes. So there's like eight, right? And I've done tons of things with these. I've done the Montessori thing where there's only like one toy per cube. So that means she only has eight toys out, but that does not work for us because then she pulls out other things or she asks for certain toys or I pull them out because I'm like, okay, she's bored with these ones. I've never been good about the toy rotation. I've tried it. I've been intentional with it. And I am just, I am not that kind of person as much as I want to be that person. I do not, I barely remember to pay my bills on time. Like if they are not auto pay. So again, I have to make this shit easy for me so that I can actually implement it and keep up with it. Uh, so anyway, with her cube organizers, for a long time, I've had like four white bins that lined the bottom part. And in those, I would put all of the things that had like multiple pieces. So like dress up clothes and baby dolls and her little people. And then like a Melissa and Doug activity thing, like the sticker boards, I would put all those in there. And then the top four cubes, I would kind of still do the Montessori thing where I'd put like one bigger toy in each thing. And I just found that she was not pulling open the cubes that were at the bottom. And she got pretty bored with the big toys that were on top and we would end up, you know, getting into other things. Um, so I finally, it finally dawned on me, like the way for me to stop being so concerned about her toys and how they're getting put away is to get four more bins so that every single cube is just a white and actually it's gold. They're really cute little cubes. Um, but it's white. I can't see it. And then I made labels. Um, Dylan actually made them for me and laminated them for me. And each of them have a picture of what goes in the bin and then, you know, the label or the tag, whatever. So we have Bluey and Peppa and dress up stuff and doll babies and little people stuff. So a lot of stuff that was already in those bins. But I'm hoping with this method, Harper will see a cube and know exactly what's in it because of the picture on it. And then also... Dylan can help pick up the toys or like, you know, when you have other kids come over and they want to play or help put stuff away, like they just know what toy goes in what bin and it doesn't have to be total chaos. Cause I've also tried the one toy box thing too. And that was a nightmare because all of the little pieces go to the bottom. Harper can't reach in the bottom anyway. And you know, that was a whole thing. So Actually, that our reading nook that we're working on is going to have like bench storage in it. And so I've put all the big toys that I don't feel like fit in one of the bin categories in that bench toy box kind of thing. That way she can open them and they're the big toys that she can just go in and grab or I can grab them for her and they're not taking up valuable real estate in the cubes. And so I just, I'm really excited to do this because it's going to keep the clutter like the visual clutter way, way down because also kids toys are like so colorful and it's just a lot of visual stimulation. I'm not the kind of mom who has like all neutral colored toys. Like, no, they're all bright, obnoxious colors and my daughter loves them and I love them too, but I just don't want to look at them all the damn time. <laughs> so that will keep the stuff that's like out in the open concealed and I can't see it. And then we have a little storage closet in that area. And so that area, I'm not going to put 
things in bins because again, Dylan is like the visual person. He wants to be able to see the things. So I'm going to label all of the shelves and I've just decided what's going to go there. Like self-contained toys that come in like a little carrying thing or something like that. Um, then toys with like small pieces and puzzles uh, all grouped together so that you can just like grab them and go play with them. Um, and then games and arts and craft stuff, like everything that I don't want her just like dumping all over the floor. Not that she won't do that, but I don't want her to have free reign over those things just yet. And so I think it will work better for me. And I'm interested to see how this system works and if I can implement it in other areas in my home. So you just walk into a room and you look around like you wouldn't just see a bunch of shit everywhere. It would be nice and contained. But then once you open a door, maybe you see, you know, the shoe bin boxes that are clear, that's labeled, and you can see exactly what's in there. Um, something like that, that works. So honestly, I have not gotten rid of that much stuff since I've started this process. And I just literally started it like two days ago. So it's not that serious yet. Um, <laughs> but I have high hopes for it. And I am hoping that it just is something that works for us because it has been such a pain point to have a home full of stuff and feel like I did not have a home for those things. And or just I felt so overwhelmed and like I had too much stuff and that's why I couldn't get organized. That's why my home wasn't clean. But honestly, it just needs to be really easy for me to put those things away and for the people in my family that live in my house to put those things away. And I'm hoping if I make it easier, my whole life will get a little bit easier because it's just as easy to like put that thing back where it goes as it is to like leave it on the counter or throw it in a closet. Instead, I can throw it in a bin in the closet. You know what I mean? <laughs> so anyway, I feel like I'm kind of rambling at this point, but I am glad that I've gotten past that block of getting rid of things. We've definitely taken some stuff to Goodwill already, and I've listed some things on Facebook Marketplace to sell just as kind of a starting point to get back in the groove of regularly decluttering and being okay with letting go of some of my stuff. So I'm glad that I've come to this kind of happy medium of I don't have to get rid of everything. Like I deserve to keep things that I enjoy and that make my life easier or more enjoyable. And it's okay to organize them too, because I used to tell myself, if you feel like you need to organize, you have too much. You need to get rid of it. But it doesn't matter if you have two rolls of to backup toilet paper or a thousand rolls of backup toilet paper. Like they still need a home and it can still make you crazy if you don't have a system that works for you where you can just come right home from the grocery, put the things where they need to go and go about your day instead of like me being like, well, shit, where's all this toilet paper going? And I'm like shoving it in drawers and in baskets on top of the toilets and in closets and like literally just anywhere just to get it situated because it's like it's cheaper if you buy a bigger thing but then what do I do with all the paper or all the toilet paper rolls so anyway if you have also been struggling with getting rid of stuff i hope this episode has given you some permission and or inspiration or motivation to let yourself break your own rules sometimes whether that means getting rid of something that has a lot of sentimental value, but you just can't hold on to it anymore. Or if it's something that you just feel like since you spent 50 or a hundred dollars on it, that it's irresponsible to let it go. The money's already spent, whether or not that thing sits in your garage for the rest of its lifetime, or if it goes to somebody else who will actually end up using that item. And doesn't it make more sense to pass it on to somebody else who would actually use it and enjoy it? I think so, but that's kind of just my opinion. Also, you can sell stuff. Like, don't be afraid to get on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. Just like, be careful, right? Um, but you can definitely sell things. It is so easy now to do that or do it on Mercari. That's what I've been doing with clothes that just like aren't really my style anymore or, you know, I've outgrown them, like whatever it is, especially if I feel like I've spent a decent amount of money on it, then I'm just reselling it. And if it doesn't sell within a month, then I'm just taking down the listing and I'm taking it to the thrift store, you know? And 
I think that's okay because then it's not in my home. It's not causing me stress. I'm like not even thinking about it anymore when maybe I used to look at it all the time and like be annoyed that it even existed in my home. (laughs) Like now I just don't have to worry about that. So I am excited for how much stuff I'm going to get rid of. (laughs) And honestly, I'm probably going to be bringing in way more. And yeah, since my parents are moving, we are definitely taking some things from their house that's not going to fit in their new place. So I'm also like, oh my God, I've got to get some stuff out of my house to make room for the new things that are inevitably going to be coming in because you're always going to be bringing stuff into your home, whether it's hand-me-downs from your parents or it's just from a Sam's trip or groceries, literally anything else. And I don't really like the rule of like, You bring in one thing and you get rid of one or two things. If that works for you, that's great. But I don't like to have those rules because they just piss me off. So if I just don't make the rules, then I'm not as hard on myself. And then I just do like a bigger purge at some point uh, later on instead of being like, okay, I'm buying a new shirt. What two shirts am I going to get rid of? Or, you know, whatever the case is. But you obviously need to do you and do what works for you. So thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next one.